what the day will bring when we wake up in the morning. Life happens unexpectedly, and we are forced to roll with it and to roll with the punches. Sometimes the punches are so powerful that they leave us in a daze. To tell us more, please welcome Kenny Kadar with speech number nine from the Competent Communication Manual, Persuade with Power. The title of Kenny's speech is The Days of Our Days. <laughs> Not all days are created equal, but every day counts. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests, the notion that not all days are created equal, it might be a simple one. I mean, how many here, people here have had a good day before? Show of hands. Alexander Dan, you're a pretty positive guy. Tell us about one of your good days. I have a good day. Every day is a good day. Happy and healthy. Beautiful. But some of us, we have bad days, too. How, let's get a show of hands. How many people have had a bad day before? Ever had a bad day? Sole. You're a positive guy. What's, what's a bad day at Sole? <laughs> when you wake up and you just can't get your hair right. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> the events of our days can sometimes put us in a daze. And life is a roller coaster. We have ups. Like Alexander, it seems like every day is enough for him. And we have sometimes our downs, those days where we wake up and our hair just isn't right. <laughs> and it happens to the best of us. <laughs> but we have to learn to roll with the punches, to use every day as a learning experience, and to better ourselves for the future. And sometimes we experience days where you have the good and the bad, and it kind of changes your perspective on everything. I recently had one of those days, I remember it like it was yesterday, and it wasn't that long ago actually, it was February 2nd, about two months ago. I woke up that morning, and it was just like every other day. My alarm clock went off, I hit snooze. <laughs> it went off 10 minutes later, I hit snooze again. <laughs> and the process repeated like that for a couple times until I finally worked up the courage and the energy to get out of bed and brave the day. And I remember I got into the shower, I put on my suit, and I started driving to work. And then it hit me. That day wasn't just like any other day. That was the day that I was gonna resign from my job. A little bit about my job. I had worked at Bosley, which is the world's largest cosmetic surgery group, and I was the business development manager there. I was the youngest manager in corporate by about 10 to 15 years. I had a deep-rooted connection to this company. I had interned with them out of high school, and I interned with them after my freshman year of college. They were my first and only job after graduating college. So my whole professional life was basically revolved around this company. And I had good relationships there. My boss was like a mentor to me. He hired me fresh out of college, and within a month he had me going on, on trips around the globe scouting real estate. I was given a lot of responsibility. But at the same time, I wasn't totally happy with my position there. And I knew I wanted more for myself. And that's why I decided to resign and start my own business. Sometimes making a change like that, it's difficult. I mean, here I was. I, on the surface, everything looked great. I had a good job. I was around people who liked me, people who respected my opinion. I was given all the best projects for the, for the company. But I was willing to take the chance, the chance of maybe having some bad days in order to get to even better days. And I went into work that day and I told my boss, Rob. And as I mentioned, Rob had been like a mentor to me, and I was, it was kind of a daunting task to tell this guy who had kind of taken me under his wing, had shown me the ropes that, that I wasn't going to be there any longer. But I worked up, my, up, I worked up the courage to do it. And I told Rob, and when I did, I was surprised by his reaction. He was so happy for me. He was almost delighted. He was so supportive. He was like, you're going to kill it. You are going to be so successful. I'm so proud of you. He said, one day, when you get so big, remember me and hire me as your people. <laughs> I mean, it was phenomenal. So I felt like I was leaving with my head held high. And I went home that night, 
feeling good about myself, feeling good about the decision, feeling like I was on the right path. And I got into my room and I started doing work. And next thing I know, I hear a commotion coming from next door. Now I live in about a five unit complex and I share a courtyard with my neighbors and I also share a bedroom wall with two Israeli brothers. One's 28 and the other's 27. And as I'm in my room, I'm working and I hear, no, why? Why did this happen? I hear slamming of the doors. The doors are slamming. This guy is going nuts, 20 minutes. And I think to myself, do I go over there? Should I see what's wrong? What could be going on? Why is this guy you know, screaming? These are nice guys. I've never had any complaints, any problems with them. About an hour later, I went into my living room. And I see a police car. So I think, oh my god, something serious must have happened. I open my door. People lined in the courtyard. I look into his house. People lined in his house. I go up to somebody and I said, what happened? He said, Roy, one of the brothers. I said, what do you mean? What happened? Roy had taken himself to a shooting range in Van Nuys and taken his life. Huh. Now here I am in my house, and I was kind of worried about, you know, after, after all the, the good decisions, I felt like I had made a good decision, I started second-guessing myself. I started wondering, did I really make the right choice? Here I am, I'm getting, I'm getting out of this steady job with a good paycheck, you know, my life is good. And then I see Roy over here, and the parallels were enlightening. It changed my whole perspective on things. Here I was saying goodbye to a certain life, to a certain career. But Roy was saying goodbye to life. And all of a sudden, everything fell into perspective. My problems, paying rent, worrying about my job, that was nothing. My next door neighbor had to fly the next day with his brother's corpse to Israel to bury it with his parents. I mean, those problems, they just aren't the same. And it made me realize that not all days are equal. That we do have our bad days, but we also have our good days. And it's important to learn from both. When we have a bad day, we have to recognize, why was that day bad? What did I do that made it a bad day? What could I have done differently to make it better? And learn from that experience in order to make sure that we can get the most out of ourselves and out of life. Because as I mentioned earlier, sometimes the events of our days can leave us in a daze. But we can't let that happen because not all days are equal and every day counts. <coughs> Madam President.